the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, welcome to our um, church service, to our Eucharist here from the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul, West Clandon, on this beautiful snowy morning. Um, wherever you're watching, it, it might not be snowing where you're watching, but given that most people watching will be from around the Clandon area, um, I hope you have a very enjoyable day in the snow. As we gather to worship Almighty God and to remember his goodness to us, we sing our first hymn, O love, how deep, how broad, how high. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries of Christ's love by calling to mind and confessing our sins. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is read by Jane. Revelation 19, verses 6 to 10. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Then the angel said to me, Write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Jesus was attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the bar jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Then he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it, and when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until last. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you O Christ. Christ. Loving Heavenly Father, I pray the words spoken and the words heard will be true to your will. Amen. The wedding at Cana story is surprising, as is an awful lot in the Gospel of St John. It was written by John's followers decades after the other Gospels, and often has thoughts that might challenge. It has been described as a place where elephants can swim and babies can paddle. And I believe it gives us a chance to look at a bigger picture of Jesus' life and works. The Wedding at Cana story has been used by various creative sources, but it may well have been the wedding of Jesus himself, possibly to Mary Magdalene. And if you want to, want to in, look at this source and idea, then read Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. It's really quite convincing. But the bottom line is that Mary would not have concerned herself about the wine unless the wedding was a family event. Apart from his birth and flight to Egypt and being lost in the temple, we know very little of Jesus' childhood. Neither do we know much about Joseph. Matthew gives a genealogy from Abraham down to Joseph, as well as the dream of Mary and the baby. Last week's Gospel reading from John refers to Jesus as the son of Joseph of Nazareth. We know a little bit more about Mary, but not a great deal. She's mainly seen as an icon now, rather than a mother. So where am I going with this? It concerns me sometimes that Jesus is supposed to be fully God and fully human. We hear quite rightly about his teaching and acts of miracle. But we rarely see the human side. In fact, at the moment, I can only think of the death of Lazarus, where the fully human part of him comes through. If Jesus is to really understand me, I know that he need to know that he has been part of a family, that he's been there and done that that he understands the struggles and the worries and the small things. I need to understand that he himself was part of a family with all the variety of things that entails, maybe even brothers and sisters, although I'm well aware that this notion might offend some people. I need to know that Joseph was part of his life and they did son and dad things together not just training as a carpenter. I need to know that he had a good childhood and beyond, that he was supported with the big challenges that were coming. I need to know that he had friends as well as followers. And I think the story of the wedding at Cana helps. Turning water into wine was hardly a miracle. Well, it was a miracle, but it wasn't really critical. I can imagine Mary saying to Jesus, 
I know you've been wondering about your special ministry and when it's going to start. But not, perhaps now is the time to sort out the wine problem? And Jesus answers, oh, Mom, really not sure about this. And Mary answers, well, give it a try. I'm sure it'll be fine. But if nothing happens, there's no great problem. The human Jesus must have been very concerned about performing a miracle for the first time. But with Mum's encouragement, Jesus prevailed and the party continued. I imagine that the young human Jesus would have had a lot of self-doubt. But it, that he was not all that people thought he was. He might have looked at the writings from the prophets and been incredulous. But he would have found comfort and love and support from his family and friends. This story makes me feel closer to Jesus and to God than many other parts of the Bible. Family and friends at a wedding and the lack of wine problem is something I can identify with. Though my own daughter's wedding, it wasn't a lack of wine. Knowing that Jesus' ministry started with something very human gives me trust to trust gives me confidence to trust God in the little things. And for most of us, trusting God in the little things is where we need the most support. And that is great for me. Amen. Let us declare our faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The iPad with the intercessions on it has just crashed this second. Um, and so we're going to proceed with the rest of the Eucharist. And hopefully by the end of the service, the iPad will have rebooted. I'm hopeful that it might have done. Um, and we'll be able to hear the intercessions and join in with those um, after the Eucharist. And so we now proceed to the peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Through this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and sanctify them. Grant that they may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Early. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death upon the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Thomas of Canterbury, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Formed by divine teaching and at our Saviour's command, with boldness we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world, and he makes himself present with us through the sacrament of his body and blood, the sacrament of the altar. He makes us present, himself present with us too, wherever we are, even if we are prevented from being here to receive the sacrament. To those who open their hearts to him, he dwells with them. And so as you look upon Christ's body and blood in the sacrament on this altar, perhaps take a moment of quiet prayer to welcome Christ, to receive Christ into your heart. And there's a prayer of spiritual communion in your order of service to help you do this. God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ludovic, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As a form of extended post-communion prayer, we're going to say our post-communion prayers now, and then we're going to be led in prayer by Richard. God, all-powerful Father, may the new life you give us increase our love and keep us in the joy of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. O oh God, who has prepared for us a wonderful salvation, Inspire all people with such true and unfailing love that they may draw together in unity and shine as a light to the world. Come into the hearts of all with your transforming love to break down the barriers that hold people apart. Forgive the imperfections of our human vision and bless the world with better knowledge of your greatness and unfailing mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. May our churches, together and apart, be filled with your glory. Strengthen us all in the service of Christ. Bless Andrew and Joe, our bishops, Barnaby, Douglas, Helen and Sue, our ministers, and all who run and lead worship in our parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord of Lords and King of Kings, make all world leaders instruments of your peace. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, and give wisdom to all in authority. 
In particular, this week we pray for the presidency of Joe Biden and for the American people as they embark on a new chapter in their history. We pray for those parts of the world where there is strife, especially Afghanistan, Sudan, Syria and Yemen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our families and all of our community. In these difficult times, give us patience and guide us to fulfil in our lives your command of love. We thank you for the work of all who are keeping our society going at risk to their own health, especially those who manage our food supplies and deliveries, those involved in education and those in the emergency services. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. Come to all who are in sickness or discomfort of mind, body or spirit, especially those who are affected by the pandemic. Be with those who are struggling, those who are exhausted, those who feel angry, those who are fearful, those who feel unloved, those who are bereaved and those who are sick. In particular, in our own community, we pray for Jean Forley and Delia Baker. In a moment of silence, we remember all others known to us. Surround all of us with your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the love that brings life out of death. We pray for those who have recently departed this life, especially Queen Brewer, Eileen Covey, Mark Langham, priest, and Mark Moss. In a moment of silence, we remember all others known to us. Grant to the departed the perfect sight of your everlasting glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. May all these our prayers be received in the peace of Christ. Merciful Father, accept Accept these these prayers prayers for the sake sake of your your Son, Son, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this Eucharist this morning. if you're young or if you're not so young, I hope you managed to get some time to go out and play in the snow. Um, I'm certain that there are two uh, boys who are in church this morning who are going to be having some fun in the snow in a bit. Um, thank you for all of those who've contributed to our Eucharist this morning. To Jane, all the way from the Isle of Wight, thank you so much for um, reading for us. To Richard, thank you so much for leading us in prayer. I'm sorry that the iPad went wrong. You know how technology fails you at the Um, at the least convenient points. Um, So I'm really sorry that the prayers weren't where they should have been in the service, but they were a really great way to conclude our Eucharist this morning. So thank you so much, Richard. Sebastian, thank you so much for your beautiful music. Hopefully you've all received um, Sebastian's uh, little note about what uh, is being played um, in the opening and closing voluntaries. I edited it slightly and then read it when Mia had sent it out and realised that I'd forgotten how to actually write English properly. So any peculiar sentence structure at the start of Sebastian's notes is entirely my fault. Um, But it's really interesting to know a little bit about the music. Thank you so much, Sebastian and Tessa. Uh, Thank you too to Tessa for ensuring that our children have um, virtual Sunday school things sent out to them. It's a real great um, thing that you've done for almost a whole year now. Um, I can't wait to see you all again. Um, hopefully, Hopefully we're nearing the point where we might be able to gather again in church altogether. But um, uh, until then, please do stay safe and look after yourselves. And if you need anything, do give me or Helen or Douglas or Sue a call. um, And we'll be happy to help if we can, even if you just want to chat. We're now going to conclude our worship by singing to Almighty God's eternal praise, our final hymn, Christ, whose glory fills the skies, Christ, the true, the only light. Thank you. Christ, who 
be with you. May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.